People are forever looking back to an earlier time and proclaiming it a golden age. With some justification in one city's case, John Blackstone explains why. Rock me on the water, sister, will you soothe my fever brown? Fifty years ago, singer-songwriter Jackson Brown was in his 20s when he wrote Rock Me on the Water in Los Angeles. Rock me on the water. Author Ronald Brownstein has borrowed that title for his new book about a time he says L.A. was at peak creativity. The book looks at the year 1974 in Los Angeles, which I would argue was the apex of the cultural renaissance that really redefined the movie, music, and television industries from the late 60s through the early 70s in LA. It was when a young director, Steven Spielberg, was filming his first blockbuster, Jaws, a forerunner of movies laden with special effects. And a time when on TV, shows were addressing social issues. If they can't get our bathrooms by subversion, they'll get them by war. On MASH. They can have mine. <laughs> I'd be glad to keep my legs crossed until after the war. The anti-war movement. I would like to know why the last associate producer before me made $50 a week more than I do. Oh, because he was a man. On Mary Tyler Moore, the role of women and almost everything controversial on All in the Family. Yeah, but every picture i ever seen of God is white. Well, maybe you were looking at the negative. <laughs> Together, those three shows made Saturday Night on CBS sometimes called the greatest night on television. And in 1974, new artists like Linda Ronstadt and The Eagles were releasing breakout records. Well, here in my heart, I give you the best of my love. L.A. in the early 70s was one of those times and places where just enormous skill and pop culture mastery came together. Some part of me resists the idea that that was the peak of my creativity, because yeah, that was a long time ago, and you've, I've made a lot of records since then. Well, I guess perhaps the point is not that it was the peak of your creativity or anyone else's, but it was when this huge mass of creative people came together, working together, within really a few miles of each other. True. It was a very collaborative scene. It was not as competitive and cutthroat. What was striking about L.A. in this period was how much these artists uh, helped each other how much they shared ideas and even songs. Take it easy, take Back then, Jackson Brown was writing a song called Take It Easy. I wrote the lines in a standing on the corner of Winslow, Arizona. But there, he was stuck. Glenn Fry of the Eagles had an idea. In one line, he got Lord, Ford, girl, and bed. Take It Easy became the Eagles' first big hit. I gotta know your sweet love is gonna save me. I chose Rock Me on the Water as the title because it really encapsulates what I think in many ways is the major theme of the book, the question of what from the 60s, what idealism, what hopes of change from the 60s could survive in the stonier political and social soil of the 1970s. Freedom, freedom. The protest movements of the 60s, energized by the huge baby boom generation, planted the seeds of political change. But Brownstein says the boomers did not have to march to make a difference. The victory of the baby boom was cultural. Ideas that once seemed insurrectionary, ideas like more suspicion of authority, greater personal freedom, changing relations between men and women, more tolerance of difference, all of those ideas went from the edge to the mainstream, largely through the popular culture produced just blocks apart from each other in early 1970s Los Angeles. Rock me on the water, and maybe I remember, maybe I remember how